Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We are taking a look at a very intriguing Big 12 matchup as the Texas Tech Red Raiders go on the road to Stillwater and play the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The Cowboys coming off a very, very impressive win on the road at Baylor. If you guys are regular listeners, you know we were very high on this Baylor team. And I wasn't so high on this Oklahoma State team. They came into the AP poll top 12 to start the season. I was a little bit skeptical just because you lose Jim Knowles. And when I looked at that defense, I thought this was a very scheme-specific defense. I thought this defense was very reliant on what Jim Knowles was dialing up. Derek Mason has proven to be a phenomenal defense coordinator. The defense looks to be just as good as it was last year, getting behind the backfield, getting a lot of tackles for loss. That is kind of what Jim Knowles prided himself on doing last year with the Cowboys. And that looks like it largely continued. Yeah, you lose some guys in the back end, but that defense line, they get penetration, they get tackles for loss. And this is a Texas Tech team that I'm probably higher on than most of the consensus. Donovan Smith has flashed some briz- brilliance, but he also has turned the ball over seven times through five games. And I really do think that'll be a story of this game. Before we get into talking the matchups, just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. We're inside of 50 subscribers away from 2000. And we just wanted to say thank you guys. And if you do like the content, you like talking college football, consider subscribing to the channel and then help us out, liking the video, commenting. We love the, the most I thing I like about doing these videos is learning about your guys' teams, learn, hearing different college football opinions. That's what it's about. We love that and the support you guys have shown. We really do appreciate. Let's start talking some football here. I want to start with the Cowboys and, and kind of explain why I was so low on them. I got into their defense and I, I primarily said this Oklahoma State team is going to be as good as Spencer Sanders takes them. And what I've been most impressed with is Spencer Sanders isn't playing hero ball by any means. But you look at the efficiency, completing over 65% of his balls for 11 touchdowns and only two interceptions. That's that big number I'm focusing on. He's limiting those turnovers and really playing within the offense. I haven't been super impressed with how efficiently they've run the ball. Dominic Richardson only averaging 4.3 yards per carry. But one of the big question marks is how are you replacing Tay Martin on the outside? There's been a lot of wide receivers step up, and it's been kind of a committee stepping up. Brennan Presley is a guy that kind of just leads the team in receptions, always open, kind of that safety valve for Spencer Sanders. Um, Braden Johnson, kind of a deep threat. He's averaging 21.2 yards per, uh, per reception. Braden Johnson or not Braden Johnson, excuse me, Bryson Green, just a really, really big red zone target. I, I like how this wide receiver group is looking, and I like how Spencer Sanders is just playing within the offense, doing what that offense asks him to do to move the ball down the field, and really still relying on that defense. You look at the Baylor game, Spencer Sanders did turn the ball over once, but he wasn't by any means taking over the game, but he was playing within that offense, doing what he needed to do, and yeah, Baylor outgained them. I believe they got more first downs, but Oklahoma State was able to win that football game because you limit the turnovers, you let your defense and special teams go to work. That's the recipe for Oklahoma State in the Big 12. You take a look at the Big 12, and it is wide open. And Spencer Sanders can kind of just play steady. We're not asking him to be a Heisman. We're asking him to be a plus Big 12 quarterback with really, really good defense behind you with some playmakers on the outside. I do like this Oklahoma State team, and I've, I've been impressed with what you've seen from them early. The only game I'm really reading into is the game on the road at Baylor. They haven't really played anybody else that's noted. Central Michigan, probably the next best team we've played. Arizona State, quite frankly, is kind of a dumpster fire. But they look great against Baylor. Anytime you go on the road to Baylor and win a game by two scores, I'm impressed. I'm high on Oklahoma State. And then this Texas Tech team, how they match up. I I want to touch on this matchup. You look at what Texas Tech really struggled with coming off that loss against Kansas State, is the dual-threat quarterback. Deuce Vaughn and Adrian Martinez ran for 170 yards plus a pop. Deuce Vaughn averaging 7.2 yards per carry. Adrian Martinez averaging 14.5 yards per carry. I wonder if Oklahoma State is going to look at that performance for Texas Tech and say, how can we take advantage of this defense and how can we use Spencer Sanders in a similar way that Kansas State used Adrian Martinez and get that ground game going behind a mobile quarterback? Spencer Sanders doesn't look to run as much as Adrian Martinez, but I think he's just as capable, quite frankly, if not more capable as an athlete outside the pocket that Adrian Martinez is. So I think they might ask Spencer Sanders to run a little bit more than he has. You look at, he's only had 41 carries for 185 yards. He's not been a run first quarterback this year. You might see that come out against the Texas Tech Red Raiders as they really struggled to stop that against Kansas State. Getting into 
Texas Tech. This offense, when it is cooking, when it gets that first first down, it gets to go fast. It looks great. And Donovan Smith, he's a young quarterback, but he is very talented. He can put balls in windows that you see. You can't really see many other college football quarterbacks doing. There's also the other side of that coin. He turns the ball over a lot. 11 touchdowns, but he's also thrown seven interceptions through five games and didn't even start most of the game that first game. That's kind of what's killed Texas Tech. You look at how they've been doing. You take a look at the stats. They're turning the ball on average over two and a half times per game. That's what Oklahoma State thrives on, those negative plays, those turnovers. And Oklahoma State is going to look to bring some exotic exotic blitzes with a very, very good front seven, get Donovan Smith off his spot, and that's when I think you see the turnovers come. Now, I do like what Texas Tech has. You, you take a look at some of the running backs. I really like Taj Brooks. I really like Sir Roger Thompson. And I, quite frankly, I like some of these wide receivers. Miles Price is really – He's, I've liked how he looks. He's kind of a smaller guy, but he's very fast. He gets open, and he's good with the ball in his hands. I think the story of this game is going to be how well Donovan Smith can get into that rhythm. Oklahoma State's a very hard defense to get into that rhythm against, and when Donovan Smith's not in a rhythm, you really see the, the, the train come off the tracks for this Texas Tech offense. A lot of turnovers, a lot of errant throws, and a lot of sacks. Donovan Smith not always going through his progression, getting the ball out on time. You know Oklahoma State is going to do that too. It's a young quarterback behind an offensive line that's been shaky at best, I would say, from what I've seen. Oklahoma State's going to try to get him off the spot, get him a little rattled. And if they can do that, I think Oklahoma State might run away with this game. But if Donovan Smith can get comfortable, can start hitting some throws, can start moving that offense, get a few first downs, that's when you see Texas Tech do things like beat Texas. That's that's the ceiling for this Texas Tech team. But again, a young quarterback, shaky offensive line. You're going to need to see Donovan Smith settle in and kind of get comfortable. To the pick, Texas Tech comes in as a nine-and-a-half point underdog. That's moved around. I think I saw it as low as eight-and-a-half. I wouldn't hate Texas Tech if that number gets over ten-and-a-half. I think Oklahoma State wins this game. And quite frankly, this is a game I'm probably not betting just because Texas Tech has the capability of keeping this one close with Oklahoma State and maybe even winning this football game with how high I think the ceiling can be for that offense. I also think Oklahoma State can challenge Donovan Smith in ways that he hasn't really seen before. I think you could see a lot of turnovers, and Oklahoma State could run away with this as well. So not a game that I'm betting. If I had a side to take inside of 10 and a half or inside of 10, I'd probably lean with Oklahoma State just in the sense that They're going to force the turnovers. They're going to get short fields for that offense. And then you look at what Texas Tech just struggled with the week before. It's that mobile QB. It's that quarterback can break the pocket and move the chains with his legs. Adrian Martinez did that. Spencer Sanders has a very, very similar skill set. Adrian Martinez and Spencer Sanders are eerily kind of the same story. Two guys that have a ton of talent, haven't quite always put it together, have struggled with turnovers. But if you see Spencer Sanders continue with what he's been doing lately – I, I really do think that Oklahoma State has a good offense, and I think they can can win this football game. And story of the game, I'm looking for guys like Mason Cobb, Xavier Benson, Brock Martin, Tyler Lacey, Colin Oliver. I'm looking for those guys to get behind the line of scrimmage, create some havoc, and force Donovan Smith to making some throws that he probably would want to have back. That's what we've seen throughout the year. So I think we'll see on the road in Stillwater. Probably lean at Oklahoma State here, though. I'm not excited about taking them anything outside of 10. Nine and a half could take. I'm probably leaving it, but I will definitely be watching this game. This is going to be a good one. we got three thirty 3.30 kickoff in Stillwater. Can't wait to watch this one. And again, if you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We do appreciate all the support you guys have shown. And then let us know in the comment section who you guys got in this game. It is going to be a good one. We'll talk to you guys all later.